Good morning. So, I got a light day today, kind of. I've got a big ass doodle that I do uh, like every eight weeks. I just shave him down, but he's still a lot of work because she's just big. Uh, so I've got him and I've got my little Otis friend and I was planning on putting another dog, um, but this honestly is probably good to talk about anyway. I just didn't have any that fell in the area that I wanted to be in or that I was going to be in. Um, all the dogs that we're trying to book were just all over, uh, in other areas that I cover. So I decided to just leave this open rather than driving 30 minutes the opposite way, you know? So sometimes it's more profitable to take the time off and group people together. That's actually how Curtis Hamby recommends starting is to, um, you know, start in like neighborhoods. And he says it's better to like, you know, do a day like that, that it's like a, maybe a slower day rather than driving all over the place so I have been trying to do that now um when I first started I just like it boomed and I just took everybody and I'm really kind of like paying the price for that now I've had to let people go I've groomed some in some areas that I don't take new clients in and I have to explain every time I go there to whatever neighbor that I don't do that area that this is special and you know whatever uh so if you are a new groomer starting out that's a little bit of advice for you this is we're gonna, this video is just gonna kind of be like brainstorming in a way. Um, but yeah, listen to Curtis, and I, I don't know who's in charge of Wagon Tails. The name John Stockman popped in my head, is that right? I don't know. Uh, cause he was, lis I listened to him on the Hey Joe podcast a while ago, and I'm pretty sure that's what his name was, but um, they'll probably both tell you to not be driving all over, cause you really are losing money. Oh shit. drive very often. I've just been using it, um, bro, this lady. Um, I hate when I get, I've said this before, but I hate when I get in the car and I'm behind somebody that's going like really, really slow or when I'm in my van because I can't pass them because I can't build up enough speed to like get past them. So I'm just like stuck behind their annoying ass. Oh my God. Um, I may have to try to pass these people though because they are really going 30 in a 55 so it's kind of dangerous um but anyway um as I was saying this I want to kind of brainstorm because a lot of you guys have been asking about private lessons now I've got some ideas in my head about how I would like to do private lessons um oh my god she's turning it's like oh my god this is gonna be a nightmare going down this road behind her because it's such a like main road and she's going so, so oh my, <laughs> she's like, never mind, wrong turn, now that I came to a dead stop, lady, oh, oh my god, and she, like, isn't even taking the next turn, oh, okay, anyway, um, stupid drivers, first thing in the morning, I've said this time and time again, and I stand by it, I think we should have to retake our driver's test, like, every 10 years or so, it would really help with these type of people, just saying, throw it out there. Just my opinion. As somebody that drives for the majority of my day, that's my opinion on the matter is that uh, we need to do a repeat of driver's test for some people. I'll retake it myself, honey. I'm not saying that I think like other people should take it. I'll retake it too, bitch. Um, but anyway, okay, so back to my original thought and how it slow pokes out from in front of us. Um, I, so one of the, like my ideas are like, obviously I can show D sheds on my own dogs. But, um, I'm not comf uh, comfortable with letting other people groom my clients, and I don't know that my clients would want other people grooming their dogs because they're paying me. So, I, the only thing I can come up with is that you would have to bring a dog, like, if you wanted to do a hands-on. Like, obviously, I could do, like, actual classes. We could talk about business and all that stuff, but if you wanted to see like in-person demos like haircuts and stuff like you would need to either like provide me a dog yeah bring your own personal dog or maybe you can talk to a client about borrowing their dog or whatever that's what I was thinking to start obviously we could do mannequins I'll see um that's actually you guys let me know do you like the mannequins is that something you'd want to do obviously that would make the class more expensive uh, if I had to provide the mannequins, because the mannequins are pretty expensive themselves. So if 
think that's that would have to be a different class um I have some ideas on like locations for like smaller classes but um one-on-one -on -one training um we'll have to we'll just figure that out but um yeah so I saw a lot of you guys were interested in the private classes and you were not like some people were into the the mobile but like it seemed like a lot of you were more interested in seeing like my hair cutting so like I said you guys let me know if that is something that seems realistic to you that you could bring your own dog or bring a client's dog that maybe you want me to look over the haircut or do the haircut with you or show you how I would do the haircut or whatever um so that is another thought um I'm kind of as far as like group classes I'm thinking small like it would be groups of like five or six to start uh and then sorry I, I was thinking for a second which way I had to go to get to this client's house um anyway so I was thinking like small groups to start uh, and we're obviously, this is like probably six months out before the classes will like actually start. And I'm really just going to see kind of how everything's going. I know that they're planning the Atlanta Pet Fair, so I'm going to stand back and watch and see how that goes. Obviously there was just the Super Bowl with like a bunch of people gathered. So I'm kind of just waiting to see like how things change as the vaccine is introduced and all that. Okay. So that's part of the reason that I'm waiting. Also, I want to make sure if I'm going to do this, that I do it right. And that's why I'm involving you guys in planning this because this is a class for you guys. Like, of course I'm going to benefit because it's not going to be free. So like, of course I'll make money for like my time or whatever, but at the end of the day, this is for you guys more so than me. So I want to make sure that the classes I have, that they're set up to where they are very efficient and that you would leave learning a lot and have like a new level of comfort in your grooming you know that's really like my goal uh so definitely let me know like what kind of stuff that you'd like to see and obviously like once we can wing the in-person classes and all that and you know things are safe um I can bring like my own client dogs and do a demo for you guys you know that would be different but uh like I said I'm I am not comfortable and I don't know that my my clients would be comfortable with me using their dog as like a test dummy so like I said the mannequins may have to be an option um but we'll we'll see um I'm just literally just shooting out some ideas and then obviously classes like uh I know I've seen a lot of you guys talk about you want to do like a full-on shampoo class um that one obviously I could do and I'm gonna look into doing like I don't know if you guys like like the zooms let me know do you guys like the online learning I'm not a huge fan of it for me per se I don't think I learn as well online as I do face to face so that's not what I was thinking for right now I was more focused on like face to face learning um but yeah, let me know. I mean, if you want me, obviously I put up videos on YouTube every day that are like online learning. But like I said, I think face to face is more like you gain more from it. Like you learn. If for me, I learn a lot better if I like watch somebody do it and then re do it myself, like recreate it. Um, so, you know, that's why I was thinking like the mannequins or model dogs or whatever, if it was going to be a haircutting themed class. And then for the mobile van, I would. Uh, the mobile class that I'm planning, I would definitely bring a dog for that so that you guys could see a dog go through the groom process in the van and ask questions as I'm doing it. Because uh, I know there's probably a million things I'm missing in my videos that I'm like, so, it's so second nature to me. Like, even like I think about like pressing the buttons and stuff. Like, whenever I first walked into a van before I knew anything, I didn't know what any of the buttons did. You know what I mean? So it's just like stuff like that to have somebody be like, what is that button? And, how does that work and whatever that really helps me to teach you guys when I know what kind of questions that you really have like the feedback is super super helpful to me so um that's why I keep coming to you guys with feedback and I really appreciate that you guys seem really excited about the classes because I know I'm really excited about the classes um so yeah there's my gas station bag um but I, I go to the same gas station every day and he like 
but yeah, um, lots of ideas right now, and I'm getting really excited about it, um, I'm just, like, right now with everything's in my head, I haven't started, like, actually writing anything down yet, it's still something I'm working with my accountant on, because, like, there's gonna be, like, more nitty-gritty stuff I'm gonna have to deal with, like, you know, taxes, that kind of thing, um, so, just gotta make sure everything is done right, and I want to make sure that these classes are something that are beneficial to you guys and it's something that you guys are excited about. Also, let me know, are you guys into, like, this, like, you know, like, Blake, how the fuck did that happen? Like, Blake Hernandez at his retreat, he does, like, the swag bags and stuff. Are you guys into, like, the swag bags? Or, because, like, I'm sure, like, I can reach out to some companies and get you guys like a little bag or something to promote their stuff like it would be obviously I wouldn't reach out to a company I don't personally use it would be like I would try to reach out to like Hydra and iGroom and whatever and that would like be included with your class maybe Barnell maybe DMK the stuff that I use constantly reach out to those companies and see if they would want to give goodies to the the group or whatever because I have, I'm thinking like I said like a small group to start like five people or so I'm scared like I'm like is that enough like but I don't want to like over like I want to make sure everybody has time I obviously I'm going to need to do some trials of class and you know to kind of see how it's going to go you know what I mean like it's there's a lot of planning that goes into it that's why uh there was somebody that commented on one of my last videos where I was talking about private lessons and they were like, I asked you, you told me to go to grooming school. And it's because like, I really knew like this was not going to be some easy small thing that I was going to be like, Oh, I'll just teach classes. It'll be so easy. Like I knew it was going to be like some in-depth thing. Like nobody's going to want to pay me if I haven't even like thought this through. Sorry, this is like so angled, but I really can't fix it right now. I'll fix it when I get up to the light if I am able to stop. But, um, you know, I didn't want to waste anybody's time or commit to something I didn't have time for. So I am like reworking my personal schedule. Uh, I have been talking about going down to four days a week for a really long time. And I believe I'm finally going to do that. Um, because I really am not going to have time to like have any time by myself if I don't take off an extra day if I'm going to do these classes too. Obviously that will be extra income so it'll balance out in the wash like I can work less and maybe that extra day off will be sometimes used to do a private lesson so maybe some days like I wouldn't mind doing a ride along where somebody like watched me in the van. I've done that before and I'm fine with that um, but like I said I just wouldn't be comfortable with handing somebody shears or clipper and be like here work on my client that's paying me a lot of money to groom their dog. You know what I mean? It's not anything personal or that I don't think you guys are capable. It's more so that that's the under the agreement between me and my client is that I'm going to be grooming their dog. You know what I mean? So that's another reason I haven't hired anybody is because uh, I know it's going to be hard to like convince like my clients. Like, Sorry, Steve. Oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. Okay. I was like, how did it get so crooked? There's like a little clip thing up there and it like got turned sideways and clip anyway. Um but yeah, that's really been where my head's been recently is getting these classes off the ground and getting all that together. Uh you guys have been thinking really hard. I've been a vegetarian for almost seven years. And I think I'm gonna eat fish. Like, I've been thinking really hard about it. You guys know I'm, like, super big into, like, science and stuff. And, like, it's just been, I don't know, like, a reoccurring thing that, like, it'll come to me. I'm, like, maybe I should eat fish and then I'll let it go and come. And then, you know, and it's mainly, like, for health reasons. Like, I want to make sure, like, I'm getting all of what I need and, like, fish oil and stuff is so good for you. And, like, I just think health-wise, if I add fish to my diet, it would probably be healthier and it's not gonna be like an everyday thing I'm still gonna mainly eat vegetarian but like I said I think that the fish oil and stuff is like really good too and I probably should be taking more 
vitamins and shit. Like, I just want to make sure I'm, like, taking care of my body. Because really for the last year, and this is, like, really deep and I don't have time to go into this whole thing right now. But I, like, went obviously through a really rough breakup. And I kind of stopped giving a shit about myself. Like, I was kind of, like, in autopilot because I had to work so much and whatever. So, it was easier to just chug, like, a million Red Bulls a day and eat chips and whatever. And it was just kind of like, whatever, I don't care. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? And now I'm, like, getting to that point of, like, being like, well, I actually do care. And I've got a lot of really good things going for me. And it's like, I'm so much bigger and better of a person than just somebody's girlfriend. Like, I know I have more than that to me and it's like for this for the last like 10 years or so that's all I've been is just somebody's girlfriend and like I said I just think I'm worth so much more than that and I'm uh trying to prove that maybe to myself and to I think actually most people see it in me more so than I see it in myself but uh yeah I'm trying to prove it to myself that I'm a fucking badass lady um I really like, I was just listening to Miley Cyrus on the Joe Rogan podcast. It's really good if you haven't listened to it. I'm almost done with it, but I really wanted to make a video. Because um, I'm actually, I was like, <laughs> doing so good for a minute there. I was like so ahead. I had like four videos pre-filmed and I would just like release one every day. Now I'm starting to catch up uh, and running out of videos. And I'm like, fuck, I gotta. <laughs> Not that I'm just trying to put out videos to put out videos. But like in a way I am, but like. They're not just shit videos to get a video out, if that makes sense. It's like, I'm trying to be like, oh, this is something I could teach. Oh, this is something I could teach. Like, rather than being like, oh, each video has to be, like, amazingly perfect. I'm just like, no, this is, like, a lesson that, like, somebody could gain something from this video. So, I'm going to put it up, you know? Um, so, that's kind of where I've been on it. But, anyway, uh, like I said, I was listening to Miley Cyrus. Obviously, Stevie Nicks is, like, a huge influence to me. And they both kind of say the same thing, like, when it comes to, like, dating and stuff. Like, how it's so hard. Like, like Miley was saying something about, like, I don't need somebody that can take care of me. I need somebody that can take care of themselves. And that's so, like, where it's been. I need somebody that's, like, mature. Because, like, a lot of the... Oh, my God. I think I've talked to so many, like, really immature dudes that, like, self-confidence is, like, such a rarity these days. It's, like, I'm, I'm not the person that's going to sit there and tell you... 20 million times a day like no honey like you're so gorgeous like and that's what Miley was saying was that she's dated a lot of guys that need that reassurance from her because she is this kind of like powerful lady and they like want that reassurance of her constantly like being like no you're great like you know whatever and I've dated a lot of guys like that that are really insecure and I've attracted a lot of guys like that since I've become single and it's like it just we don't work together because like what happens is they text me some whiny shit sorry, I'm just being honest. It's some whiny shit in my world. It seems whiny, right? Um, and you could attribute that to a lot of things. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so in my world, I'm like, that's whiny. So then I say something back, like I try to give a solution and they don't want to hear a solution because they just want to whine. I'm just being honest. That's literally how it is. You're like, they're like, oh, this is going to be the worst day. And you're like, well, I mean, not really, right? It just started. Like, is anything even going on? And then they're like, life's <laughs> I can't even, <laughs> it's just so much, because, like, I've had, like, people die in my life, and, like, I fucking dated somebody that I, like, loved to fucking shit, and they fucking cheated on me for six years, so to just hear somebody be, like, you know, so, like, devastating, they can't even, they don't even know why, they're just, like, upset, they just talk down on themselves, I'm like, oh, I just can't handle it, so it's really changed dating for me going through that relationship and also becoming like my own independent person has really changed like the way I view dating as a whole like I'm almost like I'm kind of at the point where arguably I'm not really interested in dating I've like thought about it a lot and every time I get to that point of like thinking of like okay well if I was seriously dating somebody like it, it gets me at the like them moving in I'm like oh my and they're gonna be in my space I don't have my privacy no, <laughs> I'm good. Um, so that's kind of where I've been on it. Um, it's going to take a really special type of person to date me. If I can ever, if anybody's ever able to tie me down, they're going to have to be pretty fucking special. I can tell you that much because I've wasted enough time on guys that are just not, that didn't deserve the time of day for me that I fucking 
try that's I think that's another thing about the insecurity thing is that I have always been that person of like oh I'll try to make you feel better or whatever and I wasted so much time doing that and it made me miserable because like okay here's what happens at least in my head it's like the more that I tried to make these people happy and they just were not the more insecure I felt because I that made me feel not good enough that nothing I could do to make them happy was making them happy so I was like well I must not be that great if I can't even put a smile on their face no matter what I try like I must just you know and that was like my perspective that was wrong you know that you know, I'm not responsible for somebody else's happiness. Like I, I like to do things for people to like make them happy, but like, you know, at what price? So that's kind of, like I said, something I've had to learn along the way because that's in my relationship. Oh shit. Steph's calling me. Oh fuck. Well, let me just end this because it's going to cut me off anyway. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. Thank you as always for watching and I'll check in soon.